Oh, I'm Miriam Boudry, and this is Tallgrass Farm. Stop it. Stop it. Pregnant girls, open girls, uh, and last year's Korea. These are last year's Korea. Come on. Come on. It's okay. Come on. 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 These are last year's Korea, and they were born between June and August. We like to have spring births. Um, it gives them the benefit of the sunshine and lush pastures, and they get a little weight on before the winter. So right now they're weaning, and during that time, uh, we teach them how to walk on lead, and they get their toenails trimmed for the first time. They get their first series of shots. But uh, pretty much alpacas are quite an easy livestock to maintain. They uh, get a yearly rabies and CDT shots and they uh, graze on the pasture and they get uh, a grain and a second cut hay. They're raised for their fiber. Their fiber is comparable to cashmere. So now um, the fiber industry is, is really coming along in the United States. And um, anywhere from sports coat and overcoats to upholstery, rugs, you name it. Plus they have a wonderful uh, compost. We have our manure pad back there and um, pretty much it goes as quick as we get it in the summertime. Uh, people come and get truckloads of it. It's, it's not a harsh manure, so it could be fresh and you put it, you dig a hole, you put it in the hole, you put a plant right on top mm. of it and it thrives. It really does wonderful, wonderful things for your, <laughs> for your gardens. Llamas start at about 200 and go up to like 300 or uh, whereas an alpaca is going to top out at, at 200. In fact, I only have one female on my farm that's that weighs that much. The alpaca is bred really primarily for their fiber, whereas a llama is a pack animal. They're quite, they're quite friendly. Um, they really have their own little, <laughs> their own little uh, personalities. So they get shorn once a year, usually in May in New England. And um, we belong to the New England Fiber Co-op. So they get our harvest and in turn we get uh, finished goods. Socks and hats and mittens and scarves. And alpaca can be worn by anybody. There, um, some people that have a wool al allergy won't have it with the alpacas. There's no lanolin in their fiber. It's very clean. So you could actually shear it and spin it right into yarn. Whereas sheep or wool, <laughs> you would have to scour. Oh gosh, she's got her little. <laughs> Our little wire there. And so you go to shows. Yep, we actually compete. Um, our first show is going to be um, at the Biggie. It's the North American Alpaca Show. And this year they're combining it with the Northeast Alpaca Expo, which is usually held in Syracuse. So these are moms. We just had the vet out and um, we have uh, four pregnant for this year. There's actually 22 natural colors of alpacas. It's the widest range of color in any fiber-bearing animal in the world. So you have um, from pure white to jet black, um, a variety of different grays, tans. Um, 
There's even, if you, uh, she almost has like a maroon color to her fiber. When they get shorn, um, we use every bit of their fiber, but the prime fiber is their blanket, which would be this area here. And then their neck and leg fiber are seconds and thirds. And that's used for socks or uh, rugs. Um, the prime blanket fiber um, is what you would be doing, anything that's really close to your skin, your sweaters and coats and um, scarves, mittens, hats. The big designers now are starting to utilize alpaca, which is a great thing. And a lot of your uh, big name catalogs, L.L. Bean, and um, they're, you're, they're starting to feature alpaca apparel, which is a good thing. Hmm. Is there anything you're wearing alpaca? My socks. <laughs> alpaca socks are the best. Oh, <laughs>